What is up guys, it's K8 Central here and I'm bringing you with a kind of different video from what I usually do. I am doing a lot of different videos nowadays. Because we strive for originality on this channel and apparently we are achieving it today. Get out the champagne bottles and everything guys. Um, so, there was an interview on KHinsider.com with the big people on the forums over there. With Justin Cowden, the voice actor of Hainer from Kingdom Hearts 2. Kingdom Hearts 2. Not the original. Kingdom Hearts 2. Okay. Um, so, it's not posted anywhere else on YouTube. It's only on SoundCloud. But you can go watch the SoundCloud version if you really, really want to. But if you want to watch, like, a visual thing, you can watch here. Um, so it's going to be like a 40, 45, 44 minute long interview with him. Um, he's going to basically talk about what his experience was like recording Kingdom Hearts 2 and other stuff that he's done. And it's also the community asked him questions, so we'll answer some of those as well. But I didn't really think find anything important in it because we don't really know what's going to go on Kingdom Hearts 3. He doesn't know what's going to go on Kingdom Hearts 3. He's just a voice actor. <laughs> so there's not really anything big. Not big information from it. I don't think he mentioned Kingdom Hearts 3 at all during this. Only th I think he only like mentioned it once. <laughs> So, yeah, I hope you enjoy the interview. I want to actually do some interviews one day. Hopefully that will happen. So, teaser, I may do some interviews in the future. Look out for that. <laughs> so, yeah, this has been K Central, and you're number one place for everything Kingdom Hearts Final Face related. I hope you enjoy. I'll see you guys later. Is it all good? Yes, it is. Yay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're happy. <laughs> we know that's yeah, really I'm, cool. I'm excited. Yeah, yes. everyone on the forums is really excited to hear from you. Oh, really cool! I'm so, yeah. I'm so super excited to do this for you guys. It's awesome. We really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is really, really <laughs> cool. I, uh, my wife found the forum I looked at. I was like, "Wow! Talk about some dedicated fans. This is great." Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah. the name of the hearts uh, has a really big fan base. If you can't tell, since we're from three different countries, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> This is exciting. This is a lot of fun. It's multicultural and everything. It yeah. really is. When I started reaching out via Facebook to some of the fan pages, I didn't realize how many different versions of fan pages there were for even not just the whole franchise, but the individual games themselves. Oh, gosh. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my goodness. The cosplay out here is incredible. It sure really is. is. Even up yeah. here in Canada, there's a ton of cosplay for Kingdom Hearts. Oh, really? Yeah. I got to see that. My, my, again, we went to Kamikaze Con in L.A. And my wife saw a bunch of Kingdom Hearts uh, cosplay. And she's like, you know, my husband's Hainer. And I thought about if I, if I really had the talent to make a costume, it'd be kind of fun to go, actually go as Hainer. You should totally do that. I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> that would be I amazing. really have to. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it. Let's think about WonderCon or one of these other cons are coming up or any of the individual, do they actually, I know this is a stupid question, are there Kingdom Hearts conventions just solely dedicated to Kingdom Hearts? No. Um, there, was, there was a meetup that Ariel was at. California. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. So it was celebrating, uh, wasn't it celebrating the launch of the HD remix on PS3? Oh, cool. Yeah. Very There's cool. a lot of fans there. Over 5,000 people in line just to play the game. Really amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's people incredible. really love the franchise. Oh man, that sounds so cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it's like been that. running for a decade and still has such a dedicated group of people following it. Well, <laughs> I can't even believe it's been, oh my gosh, since I even recorded the game. What, seven, eight years. Something like that, yeah. It's been a long time. Do you still remember everything? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, so I remember a lot of stuff. And then, then there are times where certain lines come up. I think somebody recently put a lot of my action sounds on YouTube. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember going, oh, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> <laughs> like the <gasps> battle grunts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the battle grunts. Oh, I can't believe I lost. Like that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, re I remember that. It was really oh, fun beating Hainer as Roxas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that must feel good that we're like yeah we had so much fun beating you <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to ask a question first yeah um did 
you get a chance to see the video that Joey sent you? I didn't. My For some reason, my email didn't bring it up. So I'm kind of, let me see if I can bring it up while I'm on with you. Is I have a awesome. Mac. Is that possible? Do you guys know? I have no idea if it works. Yeah, I have no idea. I'm a Windows guy. Same. <laughs> You're a Windows guy? Uh-oh. Uh oh, we're gonna be in trouble I'm, now. I'm, sorry, gang. We might have a. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I mean honestly, I, I'm not that tech savvy. So as far as you know, PC, I, I have a Mac and I like it, but it, you know. Um, it's perfectly okay, fine. Let me see if I can open this again. While I'm doing that, you guys have any? Uh, hold on, one second. Oh, here it is. Hold on. Again, very Mac. I have an iPhone and it's freezing <laughs> and <laughs> goodness gracious, I'm just forwarding it to my other. The video is actually in uh, it's it's in Japanese, but it's it's really the the footage that you, you're gonna like. So. Oh, here it is. I got it. Yay! Yay! Hold on a second. Looking at it right now, it actually opened for me. That's amazing. Here we go. It's doing <laughs> wow. what it's supposed to do. 100%. <laughs> Yeah, there's one scene in it that we wanted you to see. It's near the end, right? Yeah. Uh, somewhat, yeah. I think Joey sent the minute point that it was at, but I can't remember. <laughs> uh, it's actually the whole video. It shows Aqua and everything before the trailer. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. And then... Yeah, you're going to want to forward a bit. Okay. All right. Sounds about right. Yeah, almost there. Almost there. It's so close. I love it how it, it's, uh, is it dubbed in French or Spanish? Or not dubbed, but uh, subtitles. It, it's subtitles in Italian, I think, but the dub is in, uh, in Japanese. Okay. <laughs> Multicultural. So, oh, can I see Mickey now? Have I gone too far? No. Uh, it, it's, it's the perfect place. Oh, there he is. Yay. You see? Yeah. <laughs> you oh, saw yourself. Yeah. There yeah. Yeah. Yay! What a cool trailer. Yeah, that was. Um... Oh wow! What happened? Yeah, yeah. Just, I just that's the way it ended. I liked it. It was kind of cool. Oh, wow! Yeah. It looks like. <laughs> oh, can't believe I lost. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, that's really... Okay, so fire away. <laughs> now that I've seen it. Yeah. So we wanted to show you that there's probably going to be some hater action in the future since they took the time to put your character in that video. That really excites me. That makes me feel very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have no idea when or where, but we were super yeah, excited a... to see the Twilight Town gang. <laughs> oh, and you know what's so funny? Right after I had heard the announcement, I had talked to my agent and I just said, look, are we, you know, are we getting in on this and everything? And he said, yeah, I'm just, because they're still developing this, you guys. I don't yeah. They haven't they done any just casting yet. They actually. Yeah, so I don't think it'll be for a while before I hear. It'll be a while before I hear about when we're going to record. That's usually the last. I think they do the Japanese footage or voice actors first. Yes. Yep. Um, and then I'll hear later. It's a, it's a very interesting process when you're doing a character that's already in another language because they have to change. They can't, you can't translate word for word. So they, And the mouth flaps match the Japanese, so we actually have mm. to create the English to match the mouth flaps. So the script takes on a different life when it goes into English. Now we have PS4 graphics, so it's, it's going to be like extra realistic to, they have to oh, like yeah. photograph your mouth or something. <laughs> oh yeah, they actually did take some video because they try to make some adjustments, but oh, really? yeah, definitely. Did like, they if, really? Yeah, if the tone, you know, because Japanese is very, has, has a musicality to it, it's multi-syllable, you know, sentences that can mean mm. one thing, and it's this very la na 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 and I'd have to go, oh my gosh, I've got to go over there. I'd have to literally match the way it goes up and down. <laughs> oh, wow. Very funny, and then they would video my mouth because of pretty pronounced lips, and that they would try to, you know, every little flap, they want it to be organic as possible, and these guys are amazing animators, so it's, and it's got, and in the last, you know, what, seven years, something years, it's gotten even... I can't even describe it. It's even their process is more refined. They're just the way they do it now. I have a couple mm -hmm. of buddies that are animators, and they said the process has changed so dramatically that it's you guys are in for a real. It's gonna be insane. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. If you're this excited about just the announcement, wait do you see what they've come up with. That's exciting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really exciting. Yeah. That's so... that's really interesting because yeah you. 
You sounded very natural with Hainer, and I thought that the lip movements matched really well for the game, even though it was a PS2 game. Yeah, I think they, yeah. like I said, I think they made a sense because it was, it was actually one of the more difficult and lengthy recording sessions I've ever done for voiceovers. It's no joke. Cool. It's really a long process, and they'll, I mean, I think I must have hit those grunting sounds. <laughs> The director at the time, who ended up dropping out, I think, near the end, I didn't know that he dropped out near the end, he um, had cast me, he made me do like 25 takes on just a, Ugh, or a, you know, a, I'll get you, or something like that, and I, my voice started to really feel it. That's so strenuous. It was like, Stanley Kubrick is directing my voice. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to hurt you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you were actually voicing Hainer, were there like staff from the development team who were like making the game? Were they like checking you out, like giving you instructions or anything oh, yeah. like Japanese people? Oh yeah, we had actually a Japanese consultant that sat with our director and she would literally between every take go, okay, and she had a really thick accent and she'd say, now in Twilight Town, right now, <laughs> and she would go through the whole, literally for one word, she'd go for Whoa. one word, that's how detail oriented they were, and again, I think that's a testament to the creative process, whereas I'm just this voice guy that comes in and goes, you know, burps into a microphone for a paycheck, <laughs> these people really wanted it to be honest and genuine as much as, they, oh, it's just a video game, no, 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 this is a new medium, this is new art, this is new film to them. And they really wanted it to be an honest performance. So they didn't want me just to go, uh, uh, or burp, or say, hey, you. Like, I had to know what I was saying, hey, you, about. But the thing that got strenuous was I would have to hear a five-minute introduction to the hey, you. Anytime I got tired, I had to remind myself, you know what, I'm not digging ditches. This is what I love to do. You know, I have dug ditches before. I worked for my dad's mm. contracting company. And when you get to do a job like this, it's like literally I know so many people that would kill for this job. And I just reminded myself that I'm a very blessed guy. And, and to be able to work with these people that have created such a wonderful concept, a wonderful universe, it was worth it. You know, like I said, it, it makes you tired, definitely. You need to drink a lot of water. But okay, yeah. it was, <laughs> okay, next line after 80 takes of me saying, hey, you. Was, <laughs> but you guys liked it, right? I mean, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I loved it. He loves it. was my favorite. <laughs> oh, thank you. So um, you yeah. had a really good idea of the plot when you were recording the lines? They were giving me everything. I mean, That's amazing. Was, but the thing was so funny, it was my section, my segment, and I actually at one point, I don't know how this happened, but I got a call and a message on my phone, and it, this gentleman said that he was president of the Kingdom Hearts fan club and wanted to know if I could reveal any details of the story. And I'm thinking... Who got, how'd you get my number? And then I paused and went, <laughs> you got my number, cool. <laughs> you know, like, wow, I got, wow. you know, somebody's stalking me, this is great. Um, That's creepy, actually. You know you it made it, creepy, though. But honestly, I'm such a comic geek, I'm, I'm literally so part of the fanboy culture that it was kind of neat to feel like I was part of something that people really liked. And um, at Comic-Con this year, they were showing, I forgot what, um, booth I was at. I walked by and they were showing the Kingdom Hearts, the the new game that went to the to the little mini oh, oh, wow, I drop this really sense. lose all my street cred right now. Yeah. Thank you. For the and, 3DS, right? and, the 3DS? Yes, yes. And they also had this other game that I did um, I did the first two Saints Row video games and right. they had part three and then I saw, it's so funny they had part three of Saints Row along with the Kingdom Hearts game that was really hilarious to me because they're so different but, <laughs> yeah. but somebody when they and I'll be honest I purposely went over there to see if I could if anybody knew of my character and of course the second I revealed you know casually that I was the voice of Hainer they were like oh, can I get oh my gosh oh and I got, <laughs> this one kid looks at me and goes I'm so sorry I didn't recognize you I'm like well I don't look I don't wear blonde hair with you know like <laughs> You know, cargo <laughs> shorts and stuff like that. But um, I'll be honest with you, it was the thrill of my Comic Con experience to be able to have okay. folks like yourselves that enjoy the game so much that you'd honor me with allowing me to be interviewed for you know, your site. I really, I'm very grateful to you guys. We're grateful as well. Yeah, you you breathe life into these characters that we love so much. You are <laughs> the character. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so much fun. I'll be honest, and it, it, it is cool to be able to somewhat originate the English speaking, you know, version of the character. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because they, they send the English tracks out to Germany and regions. Oh, Iceland really? as well. Do they really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. The English version is the, it's, it's the most Any common version. Japan, yeah. Yeah. That is so amazing. Yeah, they yeah. usually just add subtitles to it, but your voice is the one that they hear in other countries as well. Oh, that is amazing. Exactly, exactly, yeah. I mean, I can, I can vouch for that. You, your voice is here in Iceland as well, so... <laughs> Sweet. Awesome! <laughs> a bunch of people have heard your voice. It must be a very, very special feeling. <laughs> oh, it, it definitely is. Although yes. I, I had a previous job I did for Disney, the credit was on IMDb, and someone decided to send a correction that took away all my credits and give it to a, a comedian mm. who just happens to look like the character I was playing. And it really, I had to go back and forth with them for a while to get my credits back. It was ridiculous. Uh... It was a little bit disheartening. It's weird with publicly uh, we, we, edited things like what that. What was that? It was, I do a, a cartoon called The Emperor's New School that's on Disney Channel or Disney XD. Oh, right. It's in reruns now, but I play the voice of Guaca, who's the Emperor's sidekick. They did a movie, The Emperor's New Groove, and they did a spinoff, so that's what it is. Okay. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, I'm, I'm the little fat guy, Guaca, and I go, Cusco rules! And that's, that's me. That's amazing. <laughs> but so yeah, like I worked with Disney, Disney before, and actually, to be honest with you, I think I did Kingdom Hearts before I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I actually do. I wish I got to work with them more. A couple of the guys that do the voice stuff there. I was actually the original voice of, his name is Kick Batowski now, but his, originally it was called Kid Knievel, and I was the original voice of that character before they went a different route. Oh, that showed. Yeah, the little oh. daredevil kid on the bicycle. Yeah, I was a... That was a really good I, show. Oh. I was him in the pilot, and then they... I don't know, the guy they ended up picking did the same exact voice as I did, so it was pretty funny. I actually remember you from, uh, from Ozzy and Drix. <laughs> Do you really? That was, you guys, that was my first cartoon. No way. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? The best part of that was is that they used to do ensemble recording where they had everybody in the room at the same time and it gave it a, just a different feel but it, it always felt like in between takes that you were in detention having a good time with a bunch of kids because they all have a blast and all of the voices that I worked with became my mentors in voiceover and some of them did voices of some of my favorite characters when I was growing up. Um, one of my biggest mentors is Rob Paulson who does the voice of Pinky from Pinky and the Brain oh, and he's yeah. also <laughs> Oh, he's one of my that friends. Been... Oh, wow. really? That's so oh, yeah, he's a good friend of mine. And it's really Jim, cool. Jim Cummings, who, you know, I think you guys know who Jim Cummings is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, he does a lot of sure. Disney voices. He does Winnie the Pooh and Tigger now. Um, mm. uh, I'm trying to think who else. Jeff Bennett, who did Johnny Bravo on Cartoon Network. Oh, he also did, Yeah, and Phil Lamar is a good friend of mine who did pretty much – everything for Warner Brothers that year that we were doing that. And they all taught me so much and I had so much fun that I didn't want to do anything else. Even on, I love on camera acting. That's like, honestly, my ultimate goal. But this, you show up at two in the afternoon, you guys, and you get to burp into a microphone for a paycheck and go have a drink afterwards. I mean, that's just the best feeling in the world. Yeah, and you, sounds like you meet so many amazing people doing it. Oh, I've had, we had guest stars on different shows. I mean, I got thrown into the business right away in that show and learned so much from some of the best directors. Uh, Jenny McSwain, who directed that originally, she does a lot of stuff you guys have seen and loved. And obviously the video game world is a little bit different, but um, she's done a lot of stuff for Disney as well. And they're just the whole, that whole group. I mean, this, I couldn't have asked for, I couldn't be more blessed to be part of this community. It's just really, really mm -hmm. cool. I'm sure, but it is. Um, you guys want, you guys any other questions? I know you guys got a list, pull them off. Let's yeah, we have uh, questions <laughs> yeah, actually, from our We have members. a bunch of questions. <laughs> do it. I, you guys, I have, I've set my time for you oh, guys. Did, did so we want to like, we don't have a time frame. question from the members? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Do you want to start uh, with Launchpad McQuack. <laughs> Launchpad McQuack, nice. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, who's going to ask? Uh, me. Okay, cool. <laughs> Is Hainer a character you tried out for, or were you contacted to play him? If you did try out, what role was it for, and how was that experience? I actually have this new video game. Um, just go try out. It's for this role, and it was just for Hainer. It was for Hainer, and because they pretty much had almost had everybody cast, and I went in and I just read a few lines. I think it was probably not even 
copy that was actually used in the game. And I went in, the guy gave me a few directions, and usually you go into the booth, you say your name, and then you say what character you're doing, and then you do a few takes or a few lines, and the guy will get on and tell you, okay, can you try it like this? And you do that. And then you, they say, thank you for coming in. Well, I went in, I did that, and it was funny because it was kind of going through an interesting time in my life. I wasn't so happy, and I went into this audition just like, okay, whatever. And as soon as I came out of the booth, you know, expecting, oh, thanks a lot, the gentleman said to me, well, this is the best part of uh, this kind of audition is that I can tell you right now that you got the part. And I went, are, are you serious? It was the first time I'd ever gotten to actually know right then and there because when you're an actor, sometimes, especially in voiceovers, sometimes you don't hear for like six months. Oh, I've been wow. up for a part in a show that I cannot talk about right now to play a pretty famous character's sidekick, and it's been literally a year of auditions. And they'll call me back cool. in, and they'll have me come in again, and then the producers will say, well, we don't know if we want to spend this much money, and it sometimes has nothing to do with you, but you literally get called out of the blue, and they give you the part a long time later. This was right away, and so that instant gratification made me immediately forever love this game and forever love this character. <laughs> oh, it's really great. Especially since mm. you said that it was at a tough time in your life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it was, it was such this, like, big, yes, score, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's so <laughs> Finally! <awesome. laughs> Finally! Kingdom Hearts just makes everyone happy. <laughs> oh, and, and I didn't yep. know how big it was until I got into record and people were going, you're doing what? I said, I'm doing... <laughs> what? <laughs> so have you played any Kingdom Hearts games at all? Uh, the second one, yeah. My wife's such a big fan, and of course I go to kick my own butt. You know, that was what's really funny about it. You know, you try to play it. Of course. I'm yeah. not the greatest, you guys. I'll admit I'm yeah. not the best at video games. Once the old control pad went past A and B for, like, Super Mario Brothers, I pretty much kind of lost uh, interest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind touch. of I mean, Street Fighter, with combo, you know, Mortal Kombat. I was like, eh, I pretty much just push all the buttons, and if something good happens, that's great. But that's my wife is really good. Technique. Has she been keeping up with the series? Oh, yeah. And she's oh, yeah. My, essentially my, my number one fan slash manager slash everything. And, of course, wow. she'll keep up. She's finished the game and loved it and thinks it's, a, you know, just the greatest thing, the most beautiful story. And she cried. At the, she actually cried at the end. <laughs> so she, uh, she's looking for some more. Oh, uh, that's yeah, really I, great. I did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cry, but I came close. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. He, he just doesn't want to the admit that really he cried. Moving. The good, the music in it's great. Yeah, Yoko Shimomura, she's the composer. Amazing. Really, really love yeah. to see her do more out here, even you know. Yeah, totally. So does your wife have, like, an account on the forums? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm so funny you said that. I thought about, hey, I'm going to make you a plan. I'll put you on the forums. And <laughs> they want to know you have an account on the forums. <laughs> she goes, I don't. She just had her eyes just lit up. <laughs> well, you're welcome joins, to make your own. You, you, you can make I, your own I, account as well. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to. You guys are so supportive. I, I kind of want to check in every once in a while, see how everybody's doing. Yeah, you should definitely, like, troll the forums, actually. That, that'd be really, really, really I, fun. <laughs> that is so funny. A buddy of mine put on, um, he had a podcast for a while called, oh, actually, no, it was a Ustream show called Now Loading. It was all about video games, things like that. But he went and put this announcement that I was interested in being in part three on some forum. And I actually got a lot of bad-mouthing people. They're like, I hate that character. Oh, that character is so <laughs> I was just like... Okay. Don't listen to them. Cool. Never <laughs> it was kind of like the Ben Affleck playing Batman trolling the forums, and all he saw was, no! And he was like, okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> the uh, the bigger uh, something gets, uh, it's... <laughs> people, you find that are weird like that. It just means that yeah. Kingdom Hearts is super famous. <laughs> it does. This is the coolest. I actually got into a Comic-Con party this year because my friend, it was the Geek and Sundry party, and Felicia Day from the Guild, and it's like her big party, and Doug Jones, who played Abe Sapien in the Hellboy movies, he was there. There's like people really? were outside, and my buddy got a pass, and he said, I don't know if we're going to be able to get in, I just got one pass. And so we walk up to the front, and he goes, oh, I got a pass, but this is Justin Cowden from Kingdom Hearts 2. And they, the, guy, the guy's eyes lit up, and he went, oh, Hayner, come on in. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, you guys, I... <laughs> this is uh, awesome. It was such a great party, too. It was cool. That's really awesome. Uh, so I, I definitely so, think I'm going to have to do a Hainer cosplay soon. I'm going to figure out how to do it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to hold you to that, and you better Sweet. come on the forums and post pictures. That'd be great. I might, you know what? 
they want me to post pictures on the on the forum of me and a hand. My wife's looking. My my wife has got thumbs up. She's like, heck yeah. So okay. <laughs> Then you just get Hayden Panettiere and uh, Haley some and some of the other guys to do the. the <laughs> yeah, right. They should. <laughs> I think David Gallagher would totally do it. <laughs> you know what? He probably would. I know that Jessica. Oh gosh, Jessica DeChico did a. Uh, um, Jessica was actually on Emperor's New School with me, and she did one. Of the, I, I told her. I said, "Let's." I said, "You know, why don't we get every try to get everybody together?" Because we didn't all work together, but I said, let's all dress up and just pose for the forums. And of course, you know, some are more popular than others. So, you know, <laughs> some people don't even let their agents tell you yay or nay. They just kind of say, you know, stay away. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're all nice folks. I'm just, you know, it's, some of them are very, very busy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, any qu- yeah, give me, rattle them off. I got it. Okay. I've got long winded answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll ask the next one. What was your favorite part about being Hainer's voice actor? This is from forum member Chibi Hearts 249. I'm not going to lie. The fact that I can tell my kids one day, like, that's daddy. You know, I can point to, like, a cartoon, you know, that kind of a thing. And the fact that, again, right now what I'm doing, talking to you, that is probably the best part of it. Just knowing that I got to do something that people appreciated, that's incredible. It was just so much fun. I think that's probably my favorite part. That is an awesome answer. <laughs> 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 I love it. <laughs> Uh, Ariel, did you want to ask the next one? Oh, wow. Okay. If you could voice any other character from the series, be it Disney, Final Fantasy, The World Ends With You, or an original character, who would you be and why? This is from four member Light Sky 452. Okay. Um, well, I've actually done a character in Final Fantasy Tactics. Um, it was a small part. As far as Kingdom Hearts would be, I would say... You're gonna, everybody's gonna laugh at this and expect like a bad guy. Uh, it's always cool to play a bad guy. That'd be cool. But um, Goofy, Goofy the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, good old Goofy, Mickey. <laughs> That'd be a good one. Like, Goofy. Something like that. We really, although that was a little more Bullwinkle than Goofy. But I got to meet Bill, who did Goofy and who oh, does, right. Goofy. and he did a movie, a short film with my sister. And ironically, we were out at. Um, Menchie's the yogurt place and my wife was talking to him and his wife because we have a golden retriever puppy dog a service dog and I'll get into that that's a drop and drag I've got another addendum to that but they were talking up because they owned a golden retriever him and his wife and he's wearing a goofy shirt with goofy on it and I looked and I knew he was and I said Bill and he says yeah I said you're goofy and he says well yeah and I said yeah well, I, I was in Kingdom Hearts I was Hainer and you know, my sister and, and it just getting to talk to him I was like I would love to take over for you one day. That would be really cool. <laughs> but he's got, I'm telling you, that guy's going to live another 100 years. He's amazing. I say another. He's yeah. not 100. But <laughs> <laughs> Better not die in a Don't let him that. I hope these guys last, I mean, I think it was um, Donald and Daisy, I believe the actors are husband and wife. Or Mickey and Minnie, I'm not sure. The two yeah, are Mickey married, and Minnie, so it's really yeah. kind of neat to yeah. see them. Mickey and Minnie. Yeah, and I love that. I love that folks have made a living that aren't necessarily uh, on-camera celebrities. Yeah. But I love that they're not necessarily on-camera celebrities, but they get to voice these characters because a lot of voice actors have been... One thing I will say, I don't want to pontificate for too long, but I will just say I miss the unsung heroes of voiceover getting to really continue to do what they've always done. We've, We've lost a lot of jobs because they're giving a lot of roles to celebrities who can go on TV shows and promote them. And... People like Pat Fraley and Rob Paulson and Jim Cummings, and I'll, I'll go down the list forever, Jeff Bennett, they deserve every role that they get, and it really bugs me when they'll go for a celebrity over one of them who's always in the voice. Um, what's his name? Billy West and Frank Welker. My godson, you're gonna, I'm a little piece of trivia, you guys. Gear, you might not be familiar with the cartoon G.I. Joe, because I don't know, it's been years, but are you familiar with it? Gear, are you there? Um, somewhat, yeah. Somewhat, okay. Yeah. Well, um... Ladies, how about you? Uh, uh, Transformers and or G.I. Joe? Yeah, Totally Transformers. Transformers. Okay, well, um, Starstream's grandson is my godson. So I'm, I'm part what? of that community. Yeah, my little godson, Liam Cluster, is the grandson of the late, great Chris Lotta, who was an wow. absolute... If he was around today, the video games, I mean, I'm not even kidding you guys, anything from The Sopranos to Kingdom Hearts, he would have probably voiced... Many of these characters, I, I get a little choked up thinking about because he was he was definitely a pioneer, and uh, I just have to throw the credit out to some of those guys because they don't get the credit they deserve. 
there's a noticeable difference between voice actors and then actors from television. Like voice actors do so much more with their range and motion. Uh, you know, most of them are singers. Most of them are trained singers, so they know how to protect yeah. their voices. Yeah, so, it's like Jesse McCartney. <laughs> Jesse McCartney. And you know what's funny? You know, he was in the you know boy band and he had his own little thing going on, but I really actually have a lot of respect for him. And he obviously he voiced one of my favorite characters. He voiced Robin, you know, AKA Nightwing as well. And he, you know, yeah, he knows what he's doing. He's a legit voiceover. I would actually say in that Young he, Justice. In Young Justice, which I which I will say right now went too soon. I missed that show. We all miss it so much. Oh my much. gosh. Ariel I, and I are big fans. Huge fan of that, and it's just as I was really starting to get into, because they, you know, they air the episodes so far apart that you're kind of like, come on, man, let's watch it all, let's get it all together, and then they fast forwarded, you know, a few years. I'm sitting there going, you could have gotten four or five seasons out of that show, and instead they replaced it, and I won't dog it with what they replaced it with. I'm just saying, there was room for both. There definitely was. It's, I think that's probably the biggest show that I love. Hated that they canceled, and it was amazing seeing all the fans just getting so angry about it but oh i know can't really do anything about it now i've heard rumors from some people you never know there might be an actual like a, a straight to dvd movie they might do that would be amazing i would cry from happiness oh i would love to be on that show that would be yeah. so cool maybe and there will be a place for you <laughs> i know there will be eventually we'll just we'll see <laughs> i've been up for a few of those characters but i'm looking forward to kingdom hearts 3 i'm actually literally knowing just knowing that i'm going to be part of it or the character will be. I don't see why I wouldn't be asked back. I didn't, you know, burn anybody's house down or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's more likely you'll, you'll appear in, in Kingdom Hearts 3. It's, it's, he has to. Yeah, they, the Twilight, Twilight Town gang needs to be there. I yeah, agree. <laughs> Twilight Town was featured in, in the trailer, so it, it would make sense. Yeah. That's true. And again, I think they're probably going to add a lot more that you're not even expecting that should be a lot of fun. Gary, do you want to do the next question? Sure. Let's. There, there's so many to pick out from. Um, Sora X asks you, uh, when you were recording your lines for Hainer, what parts of your personality, if any, did you convey into the character? You know, it's so funny. Mostly it's energy. It's mostly just my my attitude because they can always ask me to do different versions of my voice or something like that. You know, they, they can pitch it up. They oh. can, I know, you know, like the guys on South Park, they, they just use their regular voices and then they pitch them up and they can do that. But I think what I bring the most is, and I, you can probably tell just by my enthusiasm, that's what it is. I have to bring my personality to, you know, I'm going to fight you like that kind of, a thing. and, yeah. and awesome. when you get I think I try to bring that to every character I do is the energy. Oh, yeah. I mean, even when they asked me to do an African-American soldier in, you know, Red Faction 3, and I'm like, all right, baby, what's going on? Let's do this. I'm going to fire my gun. You know? no. It's a really nice genuine. Range. It's a genuine range change, but I'm still, still just underneath, baby. You know. <laughs> Anyone uh, wants to ask the next question? Hey. I will ask... Uh, how does preparing for a role in voice acting differ from acting on stage? This is from forum member Jackson. Oh, huge, huge. Okay, this is going to sound funny. Hugely different, but still very much the same prep. You treat voiceover as if you were still doing Shakespeare. You know, I studied with a teacher. His name was Gregory Berger Sobeck. He's a teacher. He's from Yale. And Yale School of Drama, which produced Paul Giamatti and Meryl Streep and Sinai Lathan and Phil Lamar, actually. I don't know if Phil went to the drama school. But anyway, the point is, is that he was talking about, you know, you approach the work with great respect, no matter if it's, you know, selling soap in a commercial or doing Shakespeare, you approach it the same way. And obviously it worked very well for Kingdom Hearts. You really, you want to know the story. You want to know who you are in the given circumstances. And so it's kind of fun to say, who would Justin be if he was a member of the Twilight Town gang? And, and it sounds like I'm going too deep, but you know what? It's exactly needs to happen when you're telling a story, regardless of what the medium is. So I would say the only thing difference is I don't have a role that I might not be physically right for. It doesn't matter. And I don't have to work out for it. It's, I can actually show up in my bathrobe. That's the big difference. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you put a lot of effort into figuring out these characters, which is really cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, too, because you get to play. I mean, you think about when we're kids... You know, kids become the best actors because they just jump into it. They say, what am I? I'm a spaceman. Okay, wee! 
You know, they don't go, yeah. okay, now what, what space station did I come from? It, it was my father and up, you know, they don't do that. You just jump into it. And I, while I still get to play and I get to be somebody that sources all these powers and keys and all that great stuff and it's fun. Right. Uh, did you get the Hainer lines we sent you on the email? I did actually. Let me let me uh, grab my little phone here that has them. I have them all pulled up here. Okay. Well, you guys want me to? You guys want to hear me say some of these? <laughs> yeah, actually, there's this one iconic line. What's yeah. the iconic line you want to hear me say? There's this one about the klepto club. Do you remember that? Oh, my inflections might be slightly different, you guys. I don't. It's been a while since. I mean, it's true that stuff's been stolen around town. We've got a sort of settled cipher and everything. So if he wants to think we did it, I can't really blame him. See, that's not what really bugs me really bugs me is that he's going around telling everybody we're the thieves now the whole and their mothers are treating us like the klepto club have you ever been this ticked off before in your life because i haven't no never now what to do <laughs> very nice very nice actually justin i have an idea okay <laughs> can you do the the african-american <laughs> voice and oh, do that okay. again? <laughs> yeah you want to do that <laughs> All right, I'm just throwing this out there. We're just doing a different character. It's true town, and we got a score to settle with Cypher and everything. So he wants to think we did it. I can't really blame him. See, that's not what really bugs me. What really bugs me is that he's going around telling everybody where's now the whole town and their mothers is treating us like the Klepto Club. <laughs> You've been this ticked off in your life? Because I haven't. Nuh uh, never. Now, what to do? <laughs> That was perfect. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was an amazing interpretation. <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Huh? There's this one more line. Uh, Hainer actually appears in a Nintendo DS game. Hainer wasn't voiced uh, in Kingdom Hearts 3, 5, eight, or 2 days. And we have like a couple of lines for you. If you'd like to voice them, it, it would yeah. be kind of fun. Sure. Is this the better get flying one? Yeah. <laughs> better get flying if you don't want to end up buying... <laughs> oh, I'm Hainer sorry, my, my director would probably get mad at me, so I have to inflect a little more. Like, better get flying if you don't want to end up buying. Oh, uh, perfect. <laughs> Hainer gets the worst lines. <laughs> I know, I was like, huh? I get the yeah, rhymes. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, uh, did you change character. my character into like a rhyming guy? What do you think, Hainer? Well, I don't know. I'm going to play with Snow. Yeah. <laughs> Is there another one here you want me to read? Is this... You knew him? <laughs> How come you're bothering us? Yeah. Yeah, that's all of them. Awesome. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. You still hold up as Hainer for all these years. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that my first job I got on Ozzy and Drix was because I actually beat out five ten-year-olds. And they, t- they told me, well, you're coming <laughs> up and your voice isn't going to change anymore, so we'll hire you. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you? At the time? Uh, old enough to yeah. vote. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, geez, Louise. Probably 20... 20- 20, you know, <laughs> 20, 25, yeah, 25 or 26, something like that. I'm 55 now. I'm just kidding. I'm not really. No. It's <laughs> a lot of time. <laughs> I'm joking, no. Um, I, I was considerably older than a prepubescent, let's put it that way. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to divulge the information. Uh, just You're divulge what, what we want to divulge, yeah. Um, Ariel, you, you want to ask a question? I would. Okay. For our friends who are out there who are keen to voice acting, do you have any tips or suggestions that would help them start out? And this is from Four Member Plants. Yeah. Um, you know what's so funny is I get a lot of people that ask about, you know, how do I get into voice over the, you know, it's become a much more open field as far as putting together your media to kind of showcase your voice. If you're talking about approaching an agent or something like that, what I would say is look up different classes that are taught by people that actually direct anime. Two people that um, I would recommend in, I don't know if they do it over Skype anymore. Uh, they sh- I, I know they should be. Well, one is obviously one of my biggest mentors, Rob Paulson. He has a show on Ustream called Talk and Tunes. Everybody check it out. It's a great show. And he gives a lot of advice. He actually does seminars over Skype. So he'll do voiceover classes where it's almost like pay-per-view. And you'll get stuff from him. And he has the best advice. And he obviously has an incredible body of work. And he's won an Emmy. But he could direct you on the right path. Now, on the flip side of it, I would say, even if you don't think you're a singer, take some singing lessons. Because singing, just learning how to warm up your voice and learning how to control, even if you're not the greatest singer, 
that really helps with range. Also say, start practicing. You know, if you think you can impersonate somebody or a character that exists, do it. If you, uh, you know how to do your gym teacher, do them and come up with your own little twists on those characters. You're not going to get work right now if you're like, I can do Bugs Bunny because they've got about 10 guys that can do Bugs Bunny right now who have Emmy Awards. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to get picked. I really was very blessed to be put into this realm of the acting industry and I was embraced by the community so well. I just lucked out. I mean, it's straightforward. You, these jobs are, they can be few and far between, but if you have the right attitude, that's the other thing. If you're fun, you have to be a fun person to work with. I think anybody will tell you, it doesn't matter what job it is, people want to work with you, you're going to get roles. There's movie stars right now who a lot of people make fun of and say, oh, they can't act, but they continue to be in movies. People like them. They have a great attitude. And if you have a great attitude and enthusiasm, I say go for it, get your reel together, look where you can do workshops, and uh, make it happen. Also, don't let anybody tell you you can't. Look at it this way. If anybody ever tells you you can't or why, if anybody ever says why, just say why not. And if anybody ever says can't, use that as a I'm going to make it now because that person said I can't. So let that fuel your fire. That's really good that's advice. A, that's a ver very good advice, yeah. <laughs> That actually can segue into one of the questions from the staff, which is, how did you get into acting? How did I get into acting? Um, yeah. I was a little kid, and my dad went to film school. He's a film school grad, but he ended up doing something else. But when I was a kid, him and my mom would write plays for our church, and they would give me a one line here or there. They'd just put me in there as a shepherd boy or something. And after a while, I'm probably like four years old, I knew everybody's lines. My dad says I was correcting adults, saying, oh, you're saying your line wrong. And then I would say it was supposed to be done. And my dad would be like, you can't do that. I'm like, but he said it wrong. And then my dad said, all right, well, let's give you a line. And little by little, I d it just fueled <laughs> my desire. By junior high, I started doing the Shakespeare festivals every year. And, and that's where I started. And then in ninth grade, my mom convinced me to try out for the high school musical. And... Of course, I ended up being around all these girls, and it was amazing. And I said, wow, i got to do this for the rest of my life. This is amazing. And, uh, <laughs> so it just kind of snowballed from there. You know, I ended up getting an agent, and everything just kept auditioning. And eventually I did some on-camera stuff as well as I've done a lot of theater. And it, obviously the voiceover world has been very good to me. My wife and I actually have an up-and-coming production company. Stay tuned for it. Um, I won't forget my Kingdom Hearts family. I will always... <laughs> front row seats at whatever we do, but we're getting ready to promote uh, a new company this coming year that's going to do everything from movies to web series to animation, everything. So just keep a lookout for it. Wow, that's okay. exciting. Good luck. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> you better tell us all about it when the time comes. I don't forget this at all. First interview okay. by you guys. <laughs> nice. Interview. So you haven't been in, in that there? many in interviews uh, before. Uh... Yay. Yeah, you guys are my first Kingdom Hearts interview. I did one for the old G4 network, a uh, thing called Attack of the Blog, and a gentleman interviewed me about voice acting. You know, they had some questions for about Kingdom Hearts, but this is the first Kingdom Hearts-centered interview. So, yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, yes. Actually, Justin, um, I included a, a joke question. Okay. How does one join the Klepto Club? <laughs> How does one join the Klepto Club? Am I coming up with a, a funny answer for this one? I must know all about it. No, um... By proving, oh goodness, you know what, I, I don't even think I'm going to have a funny answer to this. Like, by being very well to do and having no reason to steal, but do it anyway. I guess, isn't that what a klepto is? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a perfect answer. <laughs> Thank you. That's the most difficult question we've asked. Yes. Uh, it was. <laughs> Threw me for a loop. I just had to ask that. <laughs> Do we have any more questions? Yeah, any more? I don't think we do. We covered a lot of them when we like <laughs> would get off topic, <laughs> which is funny. You know what we should do? When I find more out about where I'm going with the game, we should have another one of these. I'm out oh, probably yeah. bound, bound by some you know, non-disclosure agreement on some stuff, but I'm sure I can reveal any returning characters or anything like that when it does happen. That would be you definitely should. Yeah, that'd be very good. Give you guys like the insights, a hero. Too. Oh yeah! Yay! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably take a break, but yeah, no, I, I keep up with everybody and see how things are uh, progressing. Because you guys actually probably have a little more information than me at times. You got a lot of good spies in the network. Yeah, we yeah. sure do. Especially yeah. these two. They are uh, <laughs> our news team. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. Me and Ariel. 
Well, and if yeah. you guys are ever out in the California area, if you're ever at any of those the conventions like Comic Con or anything that's close by, I'm doing Kamikaze Con. If you guys meet up live, that'd be great. Yeah, definitely. Actually, California hey. is very far away from me, but yes, it is. <laughs> I'll try my best. Yeah, we have um, we actually have three members of our news team that live in California. So. Oh, very cool. Well, next convention, if anybody's at, just you guys know how to get a hold of me, so we'll keep in touch for sure. Also, next time you're in Europe, just call me. <laughs> oh, hey, you know, you got to know something. I might take you up on that. Be prepared. <laughs> I want to tell you guys, uh, I got to get rolling in a sec. My wife is giving me the high sign because we got to do a couple of things today. But I wanted to thank you guys so much for having me on this. This has been so much fun and it really has gotten my fire up for this game again. I'm really actually really excited and want you guys to know that you're a big reason for that enthusiasm. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're, we're so happy that you did this. Oh, we love it. And, and yeah. honestly, it, yeah. your support means everything. And we really, really, I mean, I don't necessarily speak for everybody, but I feel like I do because we're all very grateful for the fans of this and uh, we look forward to doing more. Yeah, we look forward to hearing more from you as well. So Absolutely. I will keep in touch with you guys. Okay, great. Thank awesome. Very much. Thank you so much. Thank you Can very I much, Justin. In my pl can I do a quick plug? You guys find me on Facebook and just you guys want to share it with your friends. I'm always doing different things. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Was that the plug? <laughs> no, I didn't want to be too much of a douchey Perfect. car salesman. But I was, yeah, my Facebook page, I just started only a couple months ago. And I did just to keep in touch with everybody. That, so if you're there, okay. uh, like it. yeah, I like it. Could you like it? <laughs> yeah. No, we can like link awesome. it on the forums with the interview. I'm liking oh, it right cool. now. <laughs> Thank you so much, you guys. No problem. Um, Thank just, you. Justin oh, so, Charles Coden, right. Yes. Um, my wife actually took a picture of me doing the interview with you guys. Is it okay if I post that on my Facebook page? Oh, yeah, yes, please. Yes. Okay. And I'll plug you guys. Okay, cool. Yeah, use it. Just feel free to take it and use it. Okay. Okay, thanks. thank you. Awesome. Awesome. And please keep in touch. Be a little more diligent with keeping track with the Arts family and uh, see if I get to meet you guys in person eventually. Even if I come to Iceland. Come to yeah, Canada. you should definitely call me then. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. All right, guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and I uh, will talk to you soon. You, you too. too. You too. Thanks Thank so you much. Again. Goodbye. So much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.